This morning, I'm going to show you how to sponge trees. Here's one I just did, but my camera shut off in the middle. So we're going to do it again. In the first tree lesson, we looked at the tree shapes and their outlines, and then we did a really simple wet on wet tree line with the reflections in some water. This is the wet on wet tree line that I did for my online class. And there's no sponging in there. It's all done with the brush. So today we're going to look at sponging. This is a big sponge. A friend brought me a grocery bag full of sponges from Tarpon Springs, Florida. And I've been giving them out to my students ever since. A sponge will soak up a lot of water. What you want is a small piece of sponge with good edges that poke up. I'm going to use a piece this size. Dip the sponge in your water bowl. My water bowl is a whipped cream tub and I put a jar in the middle for clean water. Then I can use the rest of the tub for rinsing out brushes. This is a good way to recycle. Today we're going to start with some Viridian Green. If you only use a tube of green, you're not going to get very good results. You need variety in your colors. Here's some yellow. This is Cadmium Yellow Light. Notice I'm getting these colors right out of the tube so the paint is quite thick. For a shadow color, I'm going to mix some of that green with a little quinacridone red. I gather up this damp piece of sponge so the ragged edges of the top are showing. I'm going to dip this half in green and half in yellow. I don't want to push down hard enough to just make a large spot. I want the ragged edges touching the paper to create that sponged look. You can see with sponging you get nice edges. Now this shape is kind of a blob. It's about all the same sponged color. So what can you do to make your sponged trees better? Think back, think about the outline that you want for this tree. If you have an outline to follow, you can be sure you'll get an interesting shape. Also, you need shading. Think of a simple shape like a sphere. With the light coming from this side, the shadows would go on the opposite side. Trees are made up of limbs that each create their own simple shape with their own shadows. Let's add shadows to the shapes of this tree. To make the shadow color, I dip my sponge in the green and the shadow color. And then I'm gonna sponge on the shadows for each of the simple shapes that make up this tree. If you think of a tree as simple shapes, it's easier to see where the shadows would go. This is oversimplified, but it'll give you the main idea. Next, let's look at the basics for tree trunks. Straight, even tree trunks are not very interesting. Most people put their branches coming out from either side of the tree. Real branches may be coming out from the middle of the tree. Or they may be coming out from the back of the tree. See how that's a lot more interesting and realistic. Here's how to paint that. 
Most people want to paint their tree trunks brown straight from the tube. Most have a little bit of blue mixed in. Here's some burnt sienna, and to modulate that, here's some cobalt blue. Cobalt blue and burnt sienna are both granulating colors, and they work really well together to make trees. You don't want to mix them on the palette or they get dull and boring, like this. Now that was overmixed. For the first wash on your tree trunk, mix separate puddles of blue and brown and make sure you have genuine cobalt and not cobalt hue. Wet your tree trunk with clean water. Paint on some brown and some blue. I dried that. I know you're going to say, but I don't want a blue tree. That doesn't look right. For the second layer, add more brown on top of the blue and paint any areas you want to keep the way they are with clean water. Now once they're painted, tree trunks need shadows too, and they need to come from the same light source as you used for the leaves. To make a shadow color for the tree trunk, I'm using ultramarine blue, that's another granulating blue, but it's darker than cobalt, and I'm mixing that with burnt sienna. As the trunk continues up, would you see it in the light area of the leaves or the dark area? Most people guess it would go through the light area, but that's not the case. The light area is the leaves that are in front of the branches, and the dark area is the part underneath and behind those leaves, and that's where you'd see the branches. See how they look right when they're in the dark? That's the basis of sponging. Next, let's look at how you can get a sponge effect using other common household materials. If you don't have a piece of natural sponge, here's a few other things that you can try. Now this is a cheap flat brush that I don't mind destroying. I'm going to use a pair of scissors and just hack at the ends of the bristles and try to create the ragged edges on the ends of the bristles like we see on the sponge. Let's see how it does. That's not bad at all. I'd say it works almost as well as a sponge. I use old toothbrushes for a lot of things. Maybe they would create a stipple pattern. I'll dip it in the color and just push one end down onto the paper. That works better than I expected.
Another thing you could try is Q-tips. Tape three or more together in the middle, dip the end in the paint, and dab it on the paper. Uh, I don't think I'm crazy about this. It looks like a lot of little round dots. They're too uniform. I don't think I would use the Q-tips on a painting, but I would use the toothbrush. Now that you've seen sponging demonstrated, you may ask, well, but can you use sponging for a serious painting? And the answer is absolutely. Sponging works so well with landscapes. For the sky, we put the sky in first with the last video but you could also put it in last. So you can combine sponging with regular painting with the brush. Sponging at the edges really has a lovely look. Every tree line needs a little brown. Using the toothbrush for trees is pretty interesting. I think I'm going to try a pine tree with the toothbrush and I'll use Perlin green so you can see how well it looks in tree lines. Remember, you don't want two trees the same size and shape on each end of your painting because they look like bookends. I'll make the one on the right bigger and more definite. I'll also put some of that dark behind the brown, leaving a hard edge at the brown. That's my outline. And softening the top line. And since these middle trees are all the same value, I'll just add another darker shape here in front of the ones I already painted. And another over here. Sorry. I know this video is supposed to be about sponging, and here I am getting carried away with another tree line. I hope these videos are giving you some good ideas and inspiration. So jump in, experiment, see what you have around the house that might work well for painting trees. It's not about producing a perfect picture, it's about learning and adding to your art understanding and your technical skills. And I'm still mad that the video for this tree didn't record. So here it is anyway. Happy painting.